Good morning and welcome to the MYP service guys, the free content we send out every day to try and help you improve your life in one of the six key areas, one of the six MYP dimensions. Today guys, we're gonna, we're gonna look at an area which uh, is very close to my heart and I hope you guys can share some of an interest as well. We're gonna talk about family and community and more importantly, the impact that we have as humans on the environment, okay? So what I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna give you some four quick things that you can do in your house to help your impact or improve your impact on the environment. Let's jump straight into that advice right now. So let's start in the house guys, I'm gonna give you four tips to help improve your environmental impact, okay? So reduce all the bad stuff that we put out into the environment. Okay, so number one guys, I want you to go around your house and start to replace all your old crappy light bulbs, okay? You know the ones I mean, the old sort of like glass ones with the sort of coil in the middle? Get rid of them, okay? Replace them with the new fluorescent energy efficient light bulbs. Okay, they might be a little bit more expensive, but they save up to 70% more energy and they last longer than the old bulbs. I know they're expensive, so what we did as a family was every month, sorry, every week, we bought just one new light bulb to replace an old light bulb in the house, okay? Um, so it's just one light bulb a week. So after about 10 or 15 weeks, you'll slowly replace all the light bulbs in the house and that's a really efficient way to do it. Whilst we're talking about saving electricity, guys, I want you to think about other appliances around the house that you can turn off, not use as much, or switch from standby mode into off mode when they're not being used, okay? So things like TVs, things like uh, video recorders, things like cameras, phones, when you're not using them, turn them off because when they're plugged in, they're drawing energy out, okay? Things like when you, you use the kettle, boil in the kettle, guys, just boil the amount of water that you need to use or buy one of those little energy efficient one cup water boilers, okay, you can sort of just get one cup out of it because a lot of energy is wasted on boiling a big uh, kettle, but you don't use all the water and then you boil it again and again and again. It's just not very efficient. So think about it and be mindful of the energy that you use around the house. Tip number three, I want you to reduce, reuse and recycle within the house, okay? So reduce, reuse and recycle. So the first one, reduce, just reduce how much stuff you use, okay? Be sort of mindful about how much of a product you're using, okay? Can you just cut it out of your life? It might be stuff like washing up liquid, things that you buy in bulk, you use a lot of. Can you reduce how much you use of it? The next one, guys, is reuse. Lots of stuff around the house that you can reuse, uh, whether it's Tupperware, whether it's um, knives and forks that you know that you get from free meals. Keep them and reuse them instead of getting new ones to use, because all you're gonna do is just throw extra stuff away. So reuse items, reuse bags, um, anything you can find that you think you can reuse, do it, okay? And then the third one is recycle. So anything that you're not using, you have to get rid of, actually make a point of recycling it. I know uh, here in the UK, we have uh, green boxes, that you can put all your recycling stuff in. So you can put your paper, your glass, your plastic, okay? And then the government and the council will recycle that for you. I know in our kitchen here, we have three separate boxes to put in our paper, our plastic, and our glass. And then we have a separate one for our food waste. And then I take that and I put it either in a compost heap or I put it in the green wheelie bin that goes out with the grass cuttings. But make sure you're recycling, okay? Be very, very mindful of what you're using. It's a slow process, but it'll start to trickle into your daily routine and you'll find yourself being more efficient when you're out in a it's really important guys because we are having a great and not necessarily a good impact on our environment. The fourth one guys, and this is one that's the, the biggest one to me, people talk about saving water, okay? So um, instantly people think, well I can get these little things, I can put my tap and I can reduce the water I use, or I won't w clean my car with a hose. Forget all that stuff guys, you can just start to think about eating less meat. I know it sounds a bit sort of ridiculous. How is eating less meat gonna save water? Well, think about it, guys. The biggest impact on the environment that we have as humans is our consumption of animals, okay? So what we call animal agriculture. Um, we use water at a ridiculous rate to feed the animals. So whether it's to grow the food that then the animals eat or to uh, help in the production of all the animals. So, for example, it takes 3,000 liters of water to produce one hamburger. Okay, 3,000 liters of water to produce one hamburg, which is ridiculous, okay? So think about saving water, just eat a little less meat. Um, another big area and impact that we have, guys, with regards to animal agriculture is um, the deforestation, okay? So with regards to the rainforest, they're knocking down about one football pitch size uh, of rainforest every second. That's right, one football field 
every second of rainforest is being cut down okay to be used for growing crops to feed animals or for animals to graze on so if we eat less meat um, it will reduce the impact on the environment okay so your fourth tip guys is eat less meat and now for your thoughts and we're going to go with carry on with the uh, theme of animal agriculture guys like i said this is close to my heart i am a fully fledged plant-based individual i don't call myself vegan uh, because that just brings up too much controversy but fully plant-based and it is easy for you guys to do but I want you to think about this okay livestock covers 45% of the entire earth's land okay so that includes all the cities all the mountains anything that's on land 45% of that is covered by animal agriculture so livestock which we then grow to then consume so that's a bit of a waste of land isn't it um, when it comes to the impact on the environment with regards to global greenhouse gases, 51% of those gases come from animal agriculture and their byproducts, which is massive. That's more than half of all the problems we have with the greenhouse effect comes from animal agriculture. Compared to the transport industry, which we're always told about you should drive less and take trains and stuff, that only accounts for 13%, okay? 51% of all the bad gases come from animal, animal agriculture. So there's lots to think about there, lots of stuff you can change. And the last little thought, 90 million tons of fish are taken from our ocean every year. 90 million tons of fish every year. Now, I was a big fish fan, okay? And until they find a way to make it sustainable, I'm not gonna be eating fish because that is not sustainable. All that will happen is we will eventually just empty our oceans of all the fish because we cannot repopulate and regenerate the fish at the rate that we're taking it out. So there's your thoughts for the day. Now we're gonna move on to your challenge. This one's really easy guys, okay? I want you to choose one day of the week when you're gonna go meat free. So meat free for one day. Now this is not only good for your health, but it's good for your environment, okay? If you're not sure about where to go to get uh, ideas for meat free foods, Trust me guys, I eat better now than I ever did, but my wife's got a great Instagram uh, account called at Bears Kitchen. I'll put the link in the below and you can check it out. But check that out for amazing plant-based meals. And remember guys, this is somebody who's produced food for me as an athlete and as a parent. Our kids eat this as well, we've got two kids. Uh, and we are not struggling to find our protein, so you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, go meat free for at least one day in the week. Your other little challenges guys, get your kids involved. Ask them what they've been learning about in school because this is something that's really, been really popular in school now and being really heavily pushed because of the environmental impact that we're having. So we're trying to sort of grow the future changes of the world. Your kids will know the stuff they can cut, cut back on. And then once you've had a chat with your kids, turn your house around guys, turn it into an eco-friendly house. Find things that you can do as a family to change your house and be more economical, okay? Be more uh, positive with your impact on the environment. All right, that's your challenge for today. Now we're gonna finish with your motivating fact. Small acts when multiplied by millions of people can transform the world, okay? So small acts multiplied by millions of people can transform this world. There are seven billion people in the world, guys. If everyone just starts to make small positive changes, it will have an amazing impact. We owe it to this world that we live in, guys, okay? It's our world, our future, our responsibility. Have an awesome day and I'll see you tomorrow. NYP.